King of Sports. New Japan Pro Wrestling. We are four weeks away from Battle in the Valley, February 18th on Fight TV Live and across the entire globe on New Japan World Pay-Per-View. This episode of New Japan Strong really is shaping up to be special. Alex Kozlov, Kevin Kelly, let's look ahead, shall we? We know that David Finley has challenged Bobby Fish. Those two men will meet at Battle in the Valley. And I'm sure that more matches are gonna be made very, whoa, very soon. Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, what is whoa. this? Step aside, Champ is here. Champ is here. Thank you, Alex. You mentioned Battle in the Valley coming up February 18th, right, Kevin? Is that the filthiest month of the year? <laughs> it's the shortest. And that's, yeah. So, February 18th, February 18th. For the past few months, I've been dealing with some street thug named Homicide. Mm -hmm. Sure, the guy's been all around the world. He's won championships everywhere. But damn it, I'll be honest. Those days are in the past, and I don't respect what that man is doing now today. He needs to be put out to pasture. Well, I understand his championship legacy, but again, he is a tried and true street fighter. He's one of the toughest men that has ever entered the squared circle. You know, as a true professional, Kevin, I like to do my tape study. And I've gone back and I've watched the interactions. I've watched the matches that I've had with that scumbag homicide. And one thing I've noticed, one thing I've noticed in every single match, whether he's grabbing a fork, whether he's trying to poke my eyes out, whether he's biting me, he doesn't play by the rules, Kevin. Mm. He doesn't play by the rules of professional wrestling. And you know, maybe, maybe it was my fault for thinking that he would get into a, a wrestling contest with me. Maybe it's my fault for thinking that Homicide would have the balls to face me like a real man. But since that hasn't happened, Homicide, I've got a challenge for you. February 18th, you don't wanna play by the rules that New Japan Pro Wrestling sets forth. You wanna cheap shot me, you wanna try to stab me? <laughs> you can get your wish, buddy. February 18th, Battle in the Valley, I'm laying out the challenge. Filthy rules fight. No ropes, no rules. I'll see you in San Jose. Folks, let's get, let's get the action underway. We got a lot to talk about. Today's opening match, a single contest, one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Cabrera. I wonder if he's related to that guy. You know, that infamous, well. Latino meat. Say Cabrera! But what we do know. Oh man, ring announcer is getting his bullets worth. We got Jeff Cobb versus Bad Dude Tito in our main event. We got a six man matchup coming up next. That just could be an outright war with the combustible elements involved. Yes, indeed. And I'm excited to see Latino. He's been very impressive as a plate. This is faces off against El Rey de las Cuerdas. You told me that that was King of La, La Repas, which is the, the Venezuelan food. Right? The Spanish food? Well, as well, yes. No, it's the ropes. Yes, it's the ropes. As well. As well. Mascaro Dorada. The king of the ropes. Mascaro Dorada. I had to look it up. I didn't know what you meant. And then I, oh, I had that before. Those are delicious. And then I looked and I said, no, the graphic is ropes. What is he talking about? You know the internet is forever. 
forever. I was just reading an article today from December. Commercial toilets, aerosol spray, up in the air after they get done flushing. I'm horrified. We'll put a pin in that and talk about it later. This should be, let's see if, if, if Jay's able to hang with Masker Dorada. Get him off his game, use his power. Yeah! Wow, look at that. That's what Masker Dorada is so good at. If Shea Cabrera could stop him in his tracks, round him, that would be his success here. And Dorada unable to connect as Jay Cabrera was able to roll back into the ring. See, this, this match would be in Ian Riccoboni's wheelhouse because he loves Lucha and he loves to say Spanish names with the flair, with the accent. Oh, well, he thinks he says it with some flair and the accent. But his accent is incorrect. He went to NYU. Oh, power slam. Two. Ooh, man. The way Mascara Dorada's arms were stretched out for a half a second, I wondered if he was going to be able to kick out. Big power in our main event with Jeff Cobb, bad dude Tito. And again, we're just we're just over a month away now from Battle in the Valley. February 18th, San Jose, great venue. We love being there and excited to return. Just a one count. You get the feeling that more matches are going to be announced very, very soon. Of course, at the end of the Nemesis Tour, we'll find out who the strong openweight champion will be heading into Battle of the Valley. It's Peter Avalon going after the champion, Fred Rosser. We, and we, I texted you, and I, was, I just said, Peter Avalon, question mark, when, when that match was made, because it caught me by surprise. And not that he's not deserving, because Fred Rosser accepted the challenge. It, but it was presented to Fred like it was much more of a sportsman-like offer. At first, yes. At first. And then Peter Avalon, of course, looking the opportunist route. Attack from behind, and now Fred Rosser is motivated to face Peter Avalon. Ooh. What a tackle. Got some height on that. Latino meat. Very impressive. With the pecs of popping, two. And Mascara Dorada rips that left shoulder up. Next week, we got a real treat for fans. I, I, I don't know if I should tell you. Do you, are you talking about QT Marshall? Well, his opponent would be the treat, and perhaps the end result for me would be the, you know, go to sleep from Kenta on QT Marshall and finally zip the lip once and for all. I don't know if it's possible with QT Marshall. I don't think it's- That's a fair point. I don't think it's a good thing for the business. No? I don't think so. I mean, if there was a memorial show booked for QT Marshall, do you think anybody would show up? I think they would, just to make sure that he's really gone. Oh, Drop toe oh, hole man. directly. The crown of the forehead into that red corner pad. Yeah, he hit that hard. And that padding is very firm and directly behind yeah. that. Cables running oh, across yeah. high tension wire. And right now, Oscar Dorado has an opportunity to capitalize. Can he put away a much stronger Che Cabrera? There you go. Head first, jam to the mat. Masker Dorada, here we go. The king of that. the ropes. Okay. Nobody does it like him. Oh, man. Well, very, very dangerous here. Uh oh. From the darkness and into the light, Mascara Dorada. All the way to the floor, but directly on top of Che Cabrera. One, two, three, four. The Nemesis Tour packed full of big time matches. And we're happy to present it all to you right here on NJPW Strong. Mascara Dorada, top rope. He crushed him. Oh, how about that? I'm impressed. No, uh, Shea Cabrera, Latino meat for a reason. I mean, look at his chest. He's he's a he's a thick, thick 
muscular man. He's got a lot of cushion, a lot of uh, uh, absorption shock, shock absorbers. I love it. Oh, man. That don't knock the wind out of you. Inside out goes Mascara Dorada. And, and at the five minute mark, it looks like Che Cabrera is on the pathway to victory. And this is a, a victory that would, oh boy, it would, it would have ramifications all over the world. Che Cabrera's stock instantly soars. Absolutely. A win over Mascara Dorada. No doubt about it. Impressive how he's, he was able to regain control after taking that sand off the top. Yeah, again, and that's what you talked about, that shock absorption from the chest that was critical. And now Dorada, second row, can and delivers. Yep, spiked him, and I don't know if Jay Cabrera is gonna be able to kick out two. Oh! He picked up the referee's hand early, wanted to know, like, how much time do I have? It's like hitting that snooze bar one more time yeah. before the bus shows up. That's all, but lands on his feet. Misses with the boot. Next crew off the top rope, and now the leg hook two, and Dorada rips that shoulder up. So both Cabrera and Dorada have been on the pathway to victory. I thought that was going to be it. Both men really persevering here, taking a lot of damage. Well, we've been talking about Latino meat, his power, and he certainly utilized it, but now taking a page out of Dorada's book. We'll see if it pays off. If it does, it's a victory. Oh. But it doesn't. That could have been a mistake. Because Musker Dorada finds himself home Jake on the ropes. Jake Cabrera is trying to get to the ropes, but he's, oh, man. Beautiful, That's it. two. That's it. What a way to kick off this episode of New Japan Strong. More matches to be announced very, very soon for Battle in the Valley on February the 18th. We don't even know who the champion is going to be. Exactly. We'll find out in a couple weeks' time. It'll either be Peter Avalon as the new champion making his first title defense, or the champion Fred Rosser know who they're going to be taking on. We'll talk about it over the weeks to come. Second match, a six-man tag contest, one fall with a 20-minute time limit. All right, so we got a six-man tag. Jeff Cobb versus Bad News Tino. How about Assumption bank and have it pay is that Bobby Fish is the newest member of Team Philly. Well, it certainly looks like Tom Waller has recruited the services of Bobby Fish. There is a relationship going back a little bit between the two. I mean, Tom Waller has held Bobby Fish and Tyler Riley back in the day. Blue corner. Absolutely. Team Filthy, 5 foot 11 inches, 197 pounds, infamous Bobby Fish. So Bobby Fish, Kyle Riley were the Ring of Honor tag team. Championship holders, I believe, on three different occasions. They go to New York City, the Hammerstein Ballroom, and they unveil their trainer who got him ready for this title match, and it was this man, filthy Tom Lawler. Now, we all knew Lawler's reputation in the UFC at the time. We didn't know that he had had history in pro wrestling. They got rid of my favorite I know. Sorry. It's not fair, it's not right. Bobby and I go way back a long way. And look at the most charismatic, the former 
we're strong up weight champion and the million bucks that is Daniel Lime like I mean look at this. My favorite team here on strong. Waller, the favorite son of New Japan, absolutely set the whole country ablaze with the filthy strut. Also in the blue for our team filthy. Five foot eight inches, 174 pounds, radioactive poppy. Danny I thought they, I thought they threw him out of wrestling. Oh no! Six feet tall, 205 pounds, filthy. People were like, they watched New Japan Strong. They knew who Filthy Tom Lawler was. They were down with the strut. It was amazing. Now, that might be the last analysis we get to do, because this is not going to be pretty. Well, this is certainly going to be a fight. I mean, you got Eddie Kingston and Homicide together. I mean, these two like to fall. Second nature to the homicide, it's like breathing air. And homicide and Tom Lawler have some history. off or do something wrong, and that shillelagh would come off the wall. All of us would scatter, including my cousin, who was 6'3 and 220 pounds, played football, ran scared from an 80-year-old, 80 80-pound 80 woman with a shillelagh in her hand. Imagine what David Finley could do with that. Sounds like the shillelagh is definitely you know, a very dangerous weapon. Yeah. And well, it's, it's, again, it's baked and cured, and that, that particular shillelagh handed down from the Finley family, generation after generation. And it's got so many stories to it. It's been wrapped around a few heads. Yeah, there's a chance somebody might get hit with it tonight. Do they have the Russian equivalent of the shillelagh? Uh, we have many equivalents. We're talking about weapons. So look, I gotta say, there's a lot of a lot of history here between all of these guys. I mean, Homicide and Eddie Kingston go way back. They're like brothers. Uh, Homicide is like a mentor to Eddie Kingston. Yes. You know, and then and then Danny Limelight, who used to be with Homicide, you know, LAX. Oh yeah. You know, 5115 MLW. That lasted all of a hot minute. What about Homicide and Tom Lawler? They don't exactly see eye to eye, do they? Not at all. Not at all, but look, I mean, certainly Tom Lawler wants to avenge that loss. Homicide. In, in his own way, but isn't he playing into Homicide's hands? He could be, he could be. Bell sounds, and here we go. Come on, come on, buddy. Shut him up. Shut up. And so David Finley laying down the challenge to Bobby Fish to beat him one-on-one, -on -one. battle in the valley. Collar and elbow tie-up. You will certainly get a wrestling lesson from Bobby Fish. But David Finley has shown to, uh, you cannot underrate his wrestling skills. No, no, no doubt about it. 
Fish clamp it on the chin lock here. Finley able to get back to the vertical base. Now sends Bobby Fish in the oh, wow. Spring on that drop kick. And Bobby Fish, who took that boxing match last year on very short notice, has had time to get ready for this one. And he's already on the wrong end of town. You can never discount Homicide's wrestling ability. He's made his career, made his money fighting. But he can wrestle, he can ball, he can do it all. And Team Filthy taking advantage of Homicide, trapped in the corner, but Homicide trying to fight his way out of that problematic blue corner. Oh, Almost like fighting back here. And of course, the Tom Lawler side of things is that that's all Homicide knows how to do. That's right. It, you cannot, oh, it is true, it's deceiving. Homicide knows how to wrestle. He's been doing this a long time. He prefers to brawl. Well, sure. Because that goes back to his upbringing, where he was raised. Again, you look at what... Take a picture. Pull out your Android. Pull out your iPhone. This picture is going to be worth a million bucks. Watch out! Chairs oh, in the oh, ring. Be careful, man. Taito Nakabayashi is our referee, and we're going to have furniture. We're going to have shillelaghs involved. Taito trying to disarm Finley. All right. Kingston throwing that chair over for later. Something tells me Eddie Kingston and that chair are going to be fast friends. Watch them, watch them. All right, so Bobby Fish reuniting his long acquaintance with Tom Lawler here on New Japan Strong as a part of Team Filthy. Watch this. Just floats. All that. Floats over the top, crunch homicide. Again, there's that artistic move, and then there's the purposeful move. Look at that artistic move by Tom Lawler on Homicide. Oh, yeah, yeah, just the way uh, George Hackenschmidt drew it up. And Danny Limelight stealing money, collecting a check. Wait a minute, Kingston's loose. Oh, man, loose. watch out. Kingston's loose. Oh, no. Oh, he covered up. No. I want to save that. I want that to be my... Oh, no. I want that on my phone. What do they call that when you put the, you look, you, the lock screen and the picture comes up? What do they call that? I want that picture of Danny Limelight covering up. Come on, Finley, get in there. Somebody's got to get back to the corner. Because if Homicide is able to make a tag, now both Kingston and Finley return to the red. Oh, oh man. That'll screw with your equilibrium. Is having a hard time fighting off Team Filthy. Can't make any any progress towards his side of the ring. Team Filthy is doing a good job isolating. Punch him in his face. And look, I mean, I would if I was uh, Dave Finley and Lady Kingston, I would stay composed because it's helping Team Filthy continue to put the punishment on homicide. And now Homicide rolled back in. Danny Limelight there. And now set and deliver. Now just does one. You're lucky you got one out of him. Now he's going to the top rope, but Homicide is there. Oh, man. Oh, I like that. Tamara came to the aid of Danny Limelight. And what he's doing is he's buying Limelight some time. That's right. And let's see if Limelight is able to Turn the tables here, but no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. he's still to execute. All right, so, all right, so now Homicide's been getting beaten three on one. The tag to Eddie Kingston. And oh. here we go. Eddie Kingston clearing the house with those knife edge chops. No. Here he comes. Oh, no. <laughs> 
You love that. You love that, Kevin, don't you? Oh my God. I don't like that. Kobashi style. Exploder! Now he's got one for you, Tom. Oh! Oh! Watch out for Fish. Nice. Fake tie went low with the kick. And now. Wait, Fish tried. No! And another! Tried, but would not be denied. Eddie Kingston. He's on fire. Oh, man, that landed right on the temple. And now, head of steam. Had some. Oh! Noto Atoshi there. Akira Tawe. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, look Eddie at this. Kingston has finished many opponents with this one. There you go. Oh, man. Just absorb well, that. More of an annoyance than anything else. Oh, oh man. Nice. Took his head off with that one. Oh. He had the tag rope, but he tagged Eddie Kingston. So referee Taito Nakabashi is declared for the legal. Waller is only aware of it now. Precious men here between all of them. Oh. Forcing Waller up, putting him down. Now to the cover. Two, both Waller and David Finley got to compete in last summer's G1, both their first time in the G1 Climax Tournament. Yuranagi backbreaker. Waller's able to thwart that effort. Backslide, perhaps. Rolls him all the way through to set up. Panda, but couldn't get it. Waller sinking in the rear naked choke. Looking for the stutter, no. Oh. Dumps him in the middle of that ring. After the Uranagi, a kick out of two by Finley. It's been back and forth action here in this six man tag team match. Homicide. Eddie Kings to David Finley versus Team Filthy, the newest member of Team Filthy, Bobby Fish. So did Fish tag Limelight? Look like he did after Fish got tagged in. And again, that's a great situational awareness. Oh! Top rope splash to Oh my and God, that was so close. And without benefit of a tag, Homicide's in. Are you gonna tell him? I'm not. Well, yeah, this is a this is a tough match for any referee to control. Man, no this, doubt about yeah, it. this is a rugged match, no doubt about it. Almost like fighting with everything against a rear naked chokehold. Nice reversal. Hangs on, steps through. And could go in a few different directions oh. here. Oh man. Oh, I think he's scraping on that temple with that. Back fist. Kingston runs shoulder first in the blue corner pad. Meanwhile, a roll up two. two. Oh, man. Two. two. And a kick out. That one rang Finley's bell, no doubt about it. What a vicious match. All four people. Six men here. It's a war. Looking for oh. the satellite. Nope, couldn't get it done. Trash oh. Panda with a little extra stank on it. It's over. What a match. We need a doctor. Look at his face. Hold on a second. Oh, boy, the ring announcer. Could get all the words out. This with the attack from behind. And now, double leg dive by Finley. Wait a minute, we gotta get these, these two separated. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh! That could be a separate controller. And they are fighting all the way back. And they're fighting through the curtain. We'll have to separate them in the locker room area. Oh, 
told you that chair in Kingston would get reacquainted. So Homicide, Kingston, and Finley are your winners. What a violent match that was. You loved it, didn't you? I enjoyed it. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Switchblade Jay White tried to pull the old sneak attack. Therapists have been telling him that for years. Hey, hey, hey. That's why how you use that? Message. No! Dangerous. Jay White will provide Eddie. some instruction here. Eddie, the way you use these <laughs> is like this, mate. Take a breather. I don't know why you're so angry. I simply came out here to say hello. You see, I, uh, I miss you in Vegas. I know you were a little bit scared or sick, as you like to put it. I, I, I don't know. Hey, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that one. So uh, then I came to New York, your home city, and I, I, I'm worried that I might have hurt your feelings a little bit there. So I just, I, I just, I just wanted to come out here. And as the, uh, the creator, the founder, the father of New Japan Strong, I just wanted to officially and very Calmly welcome you to my home. Oh. Well, we could thank Jay White for our presence here. Which one? This one. So diplomatic today is Jay, Jay White. Why not you? Why don't you pass it to me? Come on, pretty boy. Pass it to me, boy. Come on, mate. Okay. Okay, Eddie. Let's get to it, Jay. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. I, I need you to remember who you are talking to. And when you speak to me, I need you to put a little bit more respect in your voice. Oh, God. I mean, he is the champ. Because you see, you see, for somebody that has such a great admiration for the prestigious history of Japanese wrestling, I would expect better from you. You see, all the legends that you look up to, I look down on them. I'm better than all of them. I've beaten them all. I've beaten the best. Let's name a few. Let's name a few of yours and your favorites. Okada. Ibushi. The Ace. Tanahashi. But Eddie, the only way that your name ever gets mentioned in the same breath as theirs is if I choose to give you your moment and make you breathe with the switch blade because it's still my era and here on New Japan Strong and everywhere in this industry it is still the switch blade era you heard him Kevin you know it's true no there's no denying his track record of success hey hey prove it prove it get in the ring hold on hold on since you're the super champ hold on go ahead get in for their contributions to the retired wrestlers fund. Prove it, prove it, prove it. You think I have something to prove to you? I'm the Grand Slam champion. I'm the catalyst of professional wrestling. I'm the man that single-handedly sold out Madison Square Garden and the United Center. You want your moment? Let's go, let's go, do it. Not tonight, pal. Okay, we're taking too long. There's other matches that these people want to see. Since you don't want to do it tonight, how about the 18th of February? What is it called? Battle in the Valley, Valley of the Battle, whatever it is. Battle wanna, in the Valley? Yeah, there you go. You want to do it then in February? Come on. You said the 18th? 18th of February. San, little, Jose, San yeah, Jose. San Jose, you little San Jose, bitch. February 18th. I'm going to eat you Battle alive. Battle in the Valley. I'm going to eat you alive. I'm going to show you how insignificant you are. You're on. You're Whoa. on. We got a match added to the card in just over one month. February the 18th. Battle in the Valley is already shaping up to be 
great. And now, Switchblade Jay White has accepted the challenge of Eddie Kingston to go one on one. Hell yeah! Wow. I mean, look, it's true. Jay White has nothing to prove. He's already proven. But Eddie Kingston has. I mean, how could you say no to a request like that? I mean, he really, really got into the skin of Jay White. The 18th could be the day that Jay White will remember forever is the day Eddie Kingston beat him in Battle in the Valley. Unknown. Tokon Shop Global. We ship worldwide. Why, buddy? You finished those Okada orders yet? Yeah, with the new Team Filthy shirt, Papi. Genius. Eso, mi gente. The stars of today and the legends of the past come together on your smartphone. NJPW Collection. Pick up cards from special draft events. Use your collected cards to form your own faction or exchange them for limited edition special cards. Check in live from venues or remotely from home to get special tickets and items. Add all of New Japan Pro Wrestling to your collection now. NJPW Collection. Today's main event, a singles contest, one fall with a 30-minute time limit. Well, it's certainly been a wild edition of New Japan Strong on the Nemesis Tour. And let's keep it rolling here in our main event. Big Teets is in the house. Big Teets. And what, a, what an impressive run he has had ever since. You know, making his debut on Strong, becoming the newest member. Blue corner, TMDK, six feet, one inches, 255 pounds. Bad dude, Tito! Newest member of TMDK, and he uh, had a quite a successful uh, tour in Japan. My God, they're still talking about him. Man, the bass in this entrance theme is shaking my water like we're remaking Jurassic Park. Big teats. Oh, man. Fans have a lot of names for these type of battles. And I've always been, I've always had a fondness for hoss fight. When you take two big 250 plus pound men, you throw them in the ring, and they're going to slap each other and smash into one another. I do enjoy that kind of violence, no doubt about it. And Jeff Cobb. You know, when we talk about a, a specimen, yep. uh, strength, let's not forget that he represented Guam at the 2004 Summer Olympics. Th this guy can lift anybody. He's the strongest in New Japan pro wrestling. I would say, well, he's been able to do things to athletes the size of bad luck ballet that nobody else has been able to do. Right. Red Corner, United Empire, the Imperial Unit, Chef Cobb! I'm not going too far out on the limb to say that 2023 is going to be a ridiculously successful year for the United Empire. You just look at how well, they've used Idiot Gray's money, but again, Will Ospreay has kind of had his pick of 
I want this guy, and I want this team, and I want Jeremy Marcus. I want these junior heavyweights. I want this. I want that. Gideon Gray signs the checks. It started with Osprey, the great O'Conn, then Jeff Cobb, then Aaron Hanare, then Aussie Open, TJP, TJP, and Francesco Akira. It's an incredible faction. There. Yeah, an incredible group of talented individuals. Cobb, former never open weight champ. Has an unprecedented record of success, does Jeff Cobb in G1 Climax. First man to win eight matches in a row. And it was just that one blemish. The tournament's end against Kazuchiko Okada. And these two have faced against each other in tag team wrestling, never in singles competition. So this will be interesting. And Cobb has a, you know, coupled with his incredible strength, he has a disarming way of trying to get into his opponent's head. Like, oh, I didn't really feel that. And he's sarcastic in his comments in the ring. Yeah, usually uh, Bedu Tito is on the other side of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Swing and a miss. Oh. Was it going to? Oh, man. He pushed him back hard there. Oh. Oh. Launched. Well, now that dude Tito knows what it feels like. Oh. Oh. And now Cobb. Cobb did, man, he just got blistered with that right hand, Alex. Now Cobb knows what it feels like. See, and, and you and I are safe and secure up here on the stage, far away from any of that brutality. Yeah. Feels Elevated good. all the way up. No, lands on the apron. Cobb comes down the line. Tito yanks it by the hair, drives to the mat, slingshot, senton. Nice. Badzo Tito, just like Cobb, very uh, veggie, very agile, you know, for his size. And again, bad dude Tito, of course, he's the junior. And bad dude senior, Tito senior, even badder than bad dude, according to Tito. Oh, came from the world of underground fighting. And the clothesline knockdown gets just a one count. It's a fascinating story. You know, Tito was one of the most highly recruited high school athletes and had family lineage uh, that all went to Syracuse University on athletic scholarships. So it was almost. Yeah! It was almost decided for him that he was going to either play baseball or football at Syracuse. Mm. He went a different route. Two and a kick out. First, it was professional wrestling. And that wasn't really speaking to him. So then he followed the family business into the world of underground fighting. And that's the reason why he was on nobody's radar for a long, long time. And that is, again, fight for survival, for money. That's why he's a bad dude. That's a bad dude. Caught with the elbow, straight right hand. Oh, oh. little Shingo Takagi-like combo. But the drop kick, the exclamation point from Jeff Cobb, 280 pounds. And bad dude Tito weighs in tonight, 255. Oh. You ready to go Oh, surfing? Look at that. You know, I have been thinking about taking surfing lessons. I think I found my guy. No, you don't want to go surfing with Jeff Cobb. He just looks like he knows what he's doing. Well, okay, sure. You know, please, I, I could help set it up, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's, that'd be nice of you. He knows, he knows all the best spots. Wax the board, get out there and hang 10. Tito shot corner to corner. I want to get a tour of the islands. Well, I mean, the islands are, are beautiful, and there's many islands for you to get a tour of. That's what I hear. Oh, man. Jumping back elbow. Make sure you, you know, let me know how it goes. And if I don't get back to you right away, don't be concerned. It'll be all right. Yeah, no. I'm very busy. Thank you. No, and I hope that you will take me up on my offer, you know, offer. gift certificate with Jared Kratos, you know, training session. What? I urge you to take advantage of it. It'd be good for you. I would die. Look at the oh, monster wow. there on Jeff Cobb. Impressive. And hooks that huge leg of Cobb and gets a near fall. 
Bedzer Tito. Bedzer Tito here remaining in control, which is always very impressive you know, with a, somebody like a Jeff Cobb. You know, it kind of goes back to his time in the underground fighting. You never knew who you were going to be paired up against. Yeah. Could be a man smaller than you, could be equal size, could be somebody much larger than you. Yeah. Look at those shots by Jeff Cobb. Now loading up the big oh. one, cross kick. Oh, nuts. Goes for the insecurity, came up empty, dead, lift, no. Tito's had answers for Cobb. Oh, but the spin cycle. The spin cycle puts Tito down. Referee Jeremy Marcus gets to two. This is where it becomes unfair. A man that size being able to do a moonsault like that. It's pretty, ain't it? It is devastating. Would you like to learn that? The moonsault? No. I like good old terra firma. The less, the more firmer, the less terror. Setting up for the tour of the islands. Oh, look at that. And if he kicks out, oh, I was wondering if he was going to go for the leg submission, but Cobb was able to kick out. There Not we go. Time. He does have that. He, he's got a great submission yeah. game. Oh, Thunderbomb. Man. Two. And a kick out by Cobb. And he lifted him up high for that one. So this is almost what we could have expected out of the battle of these heavyweights here. Yeah. In an industry now, of course, and wrestling has changed. Matchups with men over the 250 pound mark, they don't happen all that often. Wrestling's gotten smaller, but it's gotten faster, more precise. Right. A match like this, kind of a throwback. And now look at the strength of Tito up on the shoulders. Swing, miss. Confident, unable to connect the way he would like, but drills him. Oh, oh, thrust kick there. Great extension. Oh. Oh, how about that? One from Cobb. And Tito just absorbs it. Oh. Does it go down from the Lariat attempt for Cobb? Oh. The forearm stops him. Hang on a second. Oh. And he's got him in the tour of the islands. Wait. The Aloha Maker. Wow. Leads to victory. That's Seven minutes and 33 seconds to winner of the match, Jeff Cobb! And that's the other thing you get in these Haas fights. They're big, intense battles, and they don't last very long. The victory can come at the blink of an eye. So Jeff Cobb gets the win. It has been a wild and crazy night here on New Japan Strong. The winner is Jeff Cobb! But we are full throttle wide open, heading to battle in the valley.